Mixing with Mike, plug-in of the week is the Softube Chandler Limited Curve Bender. Uh, this is an EQ that if uh, you're on the Universal Audio platform, you might be very familiar with. A few years ago, this came out on the Universal Audio platform, and now it, it is available through Softube and a native platform, which is a great addition to their collection. Uh, this is an amazing EQ. I would call it sort of a mastering grade EQ, and it is an emulation of an actual hardware unit. Uh, Chandler Limited is a company that uh, manufactures mac- manufactures this, excuse me, and um, back in two, 2007, uh, they were commissioned by uh, Abbey Road to create a new version of this for the 75th anniversary of Abbey Road Studios, and they came up with this, basically using a very similar or same circuit design as what we had in a TG12345 console, but with added frequencies. So what you have is an adaptation of something that's a classic console built in the mid-60s. The TG series, there were a a variety of them. It was replacing the Red Series console, which was an all-tube console. And the TG12345 was modular in design, which made it easier for repair. It was solid state, which was sort of the trend uh, going there. And it had a certain sound to it, which is really amazing. Uh, So what Chandler Limited did was they went about it, uh, made it, and they created something that's become a classic and legend all into itself. So let's go through the, the, uh, the work surface here go through it and uh, give you an idea of uh, what this whole thing is all about. It's really a great EQ. So what we have is, in this case, I just have this on the mix bus here, so we'll hear it a little bit that way. Uh, What you have is a four band EQ with high pass, low pass filter. You'll see that the two sides are identical to each other with the high pass, low pass filters mirroring each other. So if we start in the uh, center section here, we'll see that there's an in out for the left and right side. Uh, If you make it Uh, mid-side processing, which you can do, and it would be uh, mid and side processing. And uh, you can link the channels here, otherwise you can operate them independently of each other and the settings are identical. Just be aware if you start with something um, in, in, uh, you work with one side and then you link the channels, it will move the settings over to both so you can't offset. So just be aware of that as you're working with it. Um, Of the four bands, Essentially what you have is uh, a bass band that can be either uh, a bell curve or um, a shelving EQ. So you have that option here with that switch. Uh, You have the presence uh, EQ number two, which has a a series of selected frequencies here from 300 up to 3.6. Now there's overlap with the presence one frequency, which starts at 800 and goes up to 8.1K. Right, so you have these selectable frequencies. Now, you've noticed that some of them are different colors from each other. Uh, the white frequencies that you see here are the frequencies that were part of the original console itself. So you'll see that some of them were duplicated. So there were, I think, nine frequencies total on the original TG12345. Those are in white. The yellow ones that you see here, 8.1 and 3.6 and some of the lower frequencies here, were ones that Chandler Limited added in or uh, expanded upon using the same basic circuit designs, giving you more options and making it more flexible for modern usage. Um, On the high or treble band here, we also have the shelving bell curve switch and selectable frequencies up to 20K. All right, so those are the basics there. Uh, We have our boost cut here, which will normally give you plus minus five dB of boost. Now, uh, you can also use the multiplier here, which uh, multiplies that by 1.5. And what that does is it actually narrows the cue a little bit in addition to giving you more boost and cut range in it. So you could take the individual band out. Uh, Under normal circumstances, when you boot it up, it will come up into times one position. And then you have the Uh, 1.5 position in there. So you could really see that that's really the mastering sort of setup. And then you have the half dB increments that it kind of goes through here as you step through the the booster attenuations for any particular band. So you have that ability. You have an overall output level here. And uh, and then we have the high pass and low pass filter. So they are 6 dB per octave. So it's sort of a soft... um, a soft uh, high pass and low pass filter uh, in terms of the processing abilities of it. So you see it right there with the selected frequencies. On the top end, it starts at 30K, which is really great uh, for mastering situations. You can get that kind of subtle extension into the hearing range or the upper end of it, and then you can kind of pull right down into something more aggressive. Um, Really an amazing EQ. Best way to uh, show it off is to kind of start. I'm just going to 
bring up some drums here and uh, and start with that. So I'll, I'll kind of leave the the basics of the uh, um, uh, mix bus. Maybe we'll take a look at that later. Just start with drums and then kind of build into something just so you can kind of hear a little bit about what it does here. Uh, so let's start by um, bringing in the drums and let's just have a quick listen and then uh, I'll kind of play around just show you a few things here with it. some uh, funny things going on here with with some of the switches but i think it was just me spazzing out here with my uh, scrolling mouse so let's see here Hear like the 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 clarity and the openness of the EQ, which is sort of a trademark thing of this EQ. So, uh, so we have that there. We have some instrumentation here. So maybe I'll I'll just uh, um, which is just basically some guitars and uh, um, keys. Maybe I'll just kind of play around with this in context uh, with the with the overall mix, and then maybe we'll address a little bit of a vocal, which is a problem. This is still very early stages on in the mix of this particular mix uh, in the mixing with mic classes. So um, no effects or anything. This is pretty much just dry as it is. So uh, let's see what we got here. So this will be uh, primarily guitars and uh, some keys kind of blended in.
So if I if I kind of blend these two of them uh, together in, I could take them both in and out, so you can get a sense of what the two of them. This being the drums, this being the uh, the keys. Let's see if I can line it up. Here we go. So even just like on the stem here, you know, within the blends of, of what instruments that I have, you could hear how that really opens up the sound, you know, like you really hear the clarity and the openness of this. All right, so here's the dangerous part of this, uh, bringing in the vocal here. Uh, so the vocal, this particular vocal needs quite a lot of work. So let's see what I can do to kind of soften it up or bring some warmth or body into it. And uh, so... Here we go. Here's the vocal. I'm going to solo it up initially here so you could hear it. Now I have it split out on three different tracks, but the settings are all tied together. So when I adjust it on one, it will adjust it on all of them in case you happen to notice that. All right, here we go. The world is not my home. I'm passing through. Something greater than this life that I must be living for. And earthly treasures had me bound, and they always tear me down. And in the shelter of your arms, you'll always find me there. I cast my cares, I find you there in the river. And I cast my cares I find you there in the river no, trying to, to try something here which is to sort of tuck away maybe a little bit of that world is not my home I'm passing through something greater than this life that I must be living for And earthly treasures had me bound, and they always tear me down. And in the shelter of your arms, you'll always find me there. I cast my cares, I find you there, in the river. And I cast my cares, I find you there in the river. Oh, in the shadow of the cross, where my strength comes from. Maybe that 1.8, this one be a little bit, uh, gives it a little bit uh, more warmth in there for that presence frequency. All right, so let's uh, let's hear what it, this sounds like in context. The world is not my home. I'm passing through Something greater than this life That I must be living for And earthly treasures had me bound And they always tear me down And in the shelter of your arms You'll always find me there
you can see how they're you know surgically i can kind of go in and and you know dig in a bit with some of the boosts and cuts and it still sounds musical which i think is just really uh like the most you know amazing characteristic i uh, i've found with vintage gear and then have something that's sort of modern built that emulates something you know from the mid 60s that had a was a very characteristically important transition uh sonically for records that really led into the the sounds uh of the you know the late 60s into the 70s kind of records that a bit much more aggressive sound but it still had that ballsy kind of warmth on the low end um and uh it's so you know so even for something like this you can hear how it sort of really pulls the vocal into you know uh, some clarity and focus um that it doesn't have just sort of in you know in its base basic uh recording setup here and there's the essing and other things that need to be dealt with but you know you could hear like how powerful this is as an eq uh, just working with it in just you could work with it instrumentally one by one you could put it on the mix bus it's just an amazing eq um, and uh, incredible for mastering as well, even with the step selections and everything. Sometimes I think uh, people want to have those much finer graduations, but in, in the actual hardware itself, that's that those stepped positions are designed because they're discrete positions so that everything can be calibrated uh, perfectly, especially for gain stages where you're not dealing with potentiometers and, um, and inconsistencies of them and things like that. Uh, really great one. This is a, a great addition uh, to have back in the um, native or have in the native uh, world. So for those of you who don't have universal audio systems, uh, this is definitely a treat and a welcome addition. So there you have it. Plugin of the week, Softube, Chandler Limited, Curve Bender. Mix it with Mike. Plugin of the week. <laughs> 